Welcome, I am at Cypress Hill Cemetery in Petaluma. It was started in 1872 because the old one, Oak Hill, wasn't much of a hill. And as a result, on rainy days like this, some of the graves filled with water and it was just not okay. Mr. McNear had finally had enough. He went to visit his wife, Clara, and it was basically a pool of water. And he was like, no, no. So he found this much better hill with lots of drainage that could make a really good location. And as a result, by 1900, Oak Hill had basically closed. Everyone was over here. This is also the location that started in 1870 of the Jewish cemetery. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but Benai Israel Cemetery. So all of this, think 1870s. One of the mausoleums. Looks like people have left a lot of lovely flowers here. I love the ones that look like books. This one has really comfortable furniture. I honestly wish more mausoleums did that, where you can really sit and visit with people. These look a lot newer. And it's almost like spring has come. So many gorgeous arrangements. It was just St. Patrick's Day. It looks like this got left for that. This is a memorial dedicated to those whose remains have been scattered into the wind. This is really the most beautiful part, which is a poem about Jesus, but not written in a very typical religious way, just talking about how he was kind of alone a lot of the time and didn't own much, never really had a huge career, and then his friends deserted him. And yet, his life has affected history in a way that probably no other has. And it's just really well written, very appropriate to have right here with the people who don't have really a memorial to them. And showing that one life can make a difference. One of the interesting things are these little tiny icons talking about probably what they loved in life. Clarence was probably very handy. And it looks like Mary loved to sew and garden. I'm not sure if this is one of them, but I do know a lot of the cemeteries around here like this have potter's fields where there are interred remains. We just don't have any markers. This could be one of those or it could just be a lawn. It's hard to tell. But over there in the distance, you can see the Catholic cemetery, and I'll do that in a separate video. This is amazing. So butterflies represent resurrection. Look at these, they're little memorials in shapes of butterflies. I've never seen anything like it. It's absolutely stunning. What a way to remember someone. This is just a really interesting stone. Gorgeous. Here's a wonderful example of the clasped hands, which usually mean lovers, husband and wife. There's a lot of lichen on this, so I'm not quite sure. Wife of someone, John, wife of John, that's the reason. This is a really interesting one. See this tree stump? It's lying down. And I think that's representing Hans had a long and hopefully happy life. They're usually standing upright and cut off if it was short. And here the tree has lived. Look at this. That is artistry. Love the fly fishing memorial. This is really exciting to me. We have a whole slew of examples of different things right here. 
the eternal life wreath, kind of the laurels, representing that someone did something incredible in their life. We have the mason's symbol, it looks like, and in, in the back, the palm leaf with the cross, and there's more. This is just an amazing section right here. If you're into stonework like I am. And it looks like it does still get muddy even here. I'm glad I brought a second pair of shoes. There's also whole sections that are flat memorials with lawns, like this one. Here is a well-loved baseball fan. If I see a checkerboard pattern, I have to film. I just love them. It's so Alice in Wonderland. There are a lot of clasped hands here, and that's really beautiful. You can just feel the love around here, which is one of the reasons I love this cemetery. Here's another one of those empty areas that may or may not actually be empty. Could be another potter's field situation. This is really unique. Evans has this sphere. Even up here in the well-drained version, there's still a lot of water because it has been raining non-stop lately. And the fact that this is all there is, and over here is basically fine, is really a tribute to the maintenance people. So thank you for that. This is the most beautiful spot in the entire place, I think. And they even have miner's lettuce, which is right here. If you don't have this plant in your area, I don't know how to describe it. It tastes amazing. It's like watercress, kind of. Derby is probably the most dramatic of all of them. It's just missing a huge, beautiful stone hat, I think. The city of Petaluma is right there, but they very cleverly planted a whole bunch of trees, so you can't see it. You can just kind of hear the traffic here and there. Thank you for the garbage cans. I'm collecting so much right now. Lots of the usual glass and plastic and stuff. So thank you for putting these here and there. But I'm going to keep my bag because I'll probably be adding to it. Look at these tiny, tiny little bouquet. Are they called vases? I should look up the technical term for these. There's probably some kind of specific name for them. This one caught my eye because it may not show up on film, but it is bright red and just awesome. Amongst all the gray, it pops. I don't know if you can see it, but it is really starting to come down now. <laughs> There's something special about being in a cemetery in the pouring rain though. This cemetery gets a prize for most easily convenient garbage cans, but look at this. Really? Just to show you how bad the mud is right now, I just walked here. Look at that. Crazy, right? This is amazing. It's like a piece of art. Is it a mausoleum in progress? I don't know. Whatever it is, it's super cool. I did not know they had a setup for this here. Hmm. I wonder if it's still in use. Oh, look, a wild turkey out by the outbuildings. There are so many wild turkeys in Petaluma. They come by my work constantly. Usually there's a lot more, like this whole flock. This must be the Gothic turkey. He likes hanging out in the cemetery. And his friends are like, where are you going? Well, I'm just going to go alone to the cemetery in the rain. Hmm, who else does that? 
Hmm. I spoke too soon. There's a second one. That is so neat. I always get these wildlife moments when I come here. Bye. This must be the pet cemetery. It's like a little tiny cemetery within a cemetery. Here is a specially interesting effect. Benson has a moat. As does Binsfeld. They are definitely working on a project of some kind here. I'm not sure what, but I love seeing these little behind the scenes moments. You're probably tired of me talking about this, but I'm gonna keep talking about it. Look at this. There are three garbage cans, all within sight of each other. You don't have to go hunting. This makes me so happy. I have like a ton of garbage with me right now that I found. And I don't have to worry about where to put it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Usually it's a hunt to find any at all. Thank you for coming along with me. If you're ever in Petaluma, I would recommend stopping by here.